Welcome back, everyone, to theCUBE's live coverage here in Denver, Boomi World. I'm John Furrier, host of theCUBE. We've got a great segment here. Matt is back, CTO, VP of product at Boomi, and by the integration lead product manager at Stripe, the leading company on payments. Guys, thanks for, Matt, thanks for coming back. Great, yeah. great to see you, but thanks for coming on theCUBE. Thanks so much for having us. Appreciate so, first of all, I just want to say we're a small customer of Stripe. We love the products. Ever like everybody else, but uh, your success on the product side has been awesome, and congratulations. We know Mike Clavel over there, shout out to Mike. Yep. Uh, former friend of theCUBE and CUBE alumni. So, uh, you guys got a little action going on, Matt, great to see you. I'm author of the upcoming book, oh, Unbundling yeah. the Enterprise. So we can't plug it enough, right? Yeah. <laughs> it's great <laughs> to be we point out there's a book involved, theCUBE, we plug the hell out of it. <laughs> so you guys got a deal going on, obviously integration, iPass is, is becoming, at least in my opinion, the internet, because everything has to be integrated. It's a connective environment, the API deals that they did on the M&A side, you start to see the internet connective tissue, it's all going to be API based. All cloud, on-prem, cloud operations. What's your relationship? Talk about your deal. I mean, I think that the uh, aspect of this announcement that's so exciting is that Stripe and Boomi are partnering together to unlock all the financial uh, integrations that uh, are needed by our customers, right? In terms of orchestrating global payments or even doing revenue and finance automation now, it's all possible based off of these new recipes, these new connectors of Stripe on the Boomi platform. Super excited about this. Yeah, it's, it's, it's been a great uh, journey in terms of you know, just great collaboration. Um, you know, we're very excited. You know, Stripe is such a leader. I mean, I mean interestingly, not, not, not entirely related to this, but we, we're making all these announcements around APIs. I mean, if you look at API companies in the marketplace, Stripe is like the ultimate API company when it comes to yeah. the you know, best in class around documentation and, and robustness of the API, so, so that's great. But I think for our joint customers, and I think what's, what's really great is that just the, the capabilities that we're unlocking now to, to just but as you said, everything's more interconnected. Yeah. You know, our, our, our customers more and more, you know, as, as we're going into customers, we're, we connect to the proprietary systems, we connect to packaged applications, and you know, as Stripe becomes ubiquitous, uh, you know, they're running into all this integration needs. So it's a, it's a really great collaboration. Yeah, I mean, you guys both, uh, as companies, have achieved scale. And you know the the internet and being using cloud and APIs, sure, yeah, you can integrate really easily. Hey, it's easy to add Stripe to a small company like the Cube for our payments. Okay, we add it in, it's all plugged in, we're in the cloud, great. Now when you start to scale, you guys yeah. have achieved scale, you guys are running iPads, which is essentially now a modern enterprise uh, platform at scale, both horizontally and vertically into the application, scale's a big deal. Can you guys talk about what that means for the customer? Because, okay, I got Stripe embedded, now you're basically running a payment system, you got orchestration, you got policy, all kinds of essentially global challenges, if it's a global in nature. Talk about the scale impact of, of yeah. working together and how just connecting things is one thing, but scaling it is another. I, I, what's, I think uh, there's, what's your opinion on this? I think there's a few dimensions of scale, right? Like I think when people hear scale first off, the first thing they might think of is runtime scale and you know elastic scalability on it. For a lot of enterprises, like that's not the first dimension of scalability. The scalability comes around how, just making changes. Into, you know, how do you deploy things? How do you run things in parallel? And I think from our collaboration, what's been great is you could you could say, oh, you know, Stripe's got you just Matt, you just said Stripe's got a fantastic API. Like, can't anybody connect to it? Well, yeah, but what we've been able to do is connect our business domain knowledge and look really look at the use cases to the point about scalability where, you know, highest yield, highest commonality. So uh, there's a lot of, it's not just about the technology collaboration, it's around the business collaboration too and identifying those use cases. Um, but then again, of course, notwithstanding the fact that you know, that the, the scalability is there from a runtime perspective. And just, and one more thing that I think really, in terms of the harmony of the relationship is Stripe not only has the API, but you have native connectors to systems that you're for high value. I think, I think where Boomi comes in, in a big way is around that long tail of all the other stuff, which is another scaling dimension, right? Just the, the number of different systems that people connect to. I think that's the angle that I was going to think about. Initially, when I think about scale, I'm really thinking about all of the diverse systems that Stripe natively does not integrate into. And that puts a burden on our joint customers. And so this partnership with Boomi, what it really allows us to do is scale all the systems that now can interoperate and connect to Stripe. That's the part that's exciting about this. Well, it's integration, classic um, iPads. I mean, I, 
iPaaS is becoming everything needs to be integrated. But what's interesting is, is that if you look at what they're saying here in the market in general, Gen AI needs data. You guys are a data connector. Mm -hmm. I mean, money is data, data payments, information, other systems have data. So having data interact with each other is becoming a new phenomenon. That's right. I mean, data used to be slower. It's faster now. Um, it has an element of, I won't say chemistry to it, but like if I got data coming in from say a NetSuite and I want to connect it into some Stripe data, making that work See? fast. That's right. You're smirking over there. Well, it's in the book. It's in the book. <laughs> it's in the book. <laughs> it's in the book. 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 Data as currency and, and the value of data and the economics of data. I think it's a really interesting dynamic around the digital economy is like, if you look at the biggest companies, and, and Stripe is a great example of this, of the companies that have really thrived in the economy, they recognize that, hey, money's important yeah, for Stripe yeah. for sure, but data is, is really important. And, and I would even argue that we think, of, we, we call these companies big tech, right? But they're actually more data companies than anything. I mean, how, how is Facebook and Google yeah. monetized? Like, it's, it's all about the data. So I, I, think, it, I think that the, the whole data ecosystem, the whole integration ecosystem, companies that really understand that, uh, how, to, how to use the data effectively, how to exchange data, how to value data, are, are leading companies. And, and where, where is the medium for, okay. for movement of data? It's through the integration, so. It really, it really drives the business model of a company, how they handle their data, right. will ultimately define what how they organize and how their systems are built. Um, and you guys bring that out loud and clear here. And also, um, uh, you, we're hearing about agents, connectors. You did right. mention connectors. In the old school days of connectors, we were riffing on this yesterday, um, and Steve Lucas actually joked on stage yesterday by saying, oh yeah, just automate your marketing automation system or replace it. Now, he came from Marketo, so he didn't actually say Marketo, but I, I did. I got the inside joke there. But he's like, he, he was like, I'm only kidding, but he was kind of serious. Um, Connectors are old, right. and so when you start getting into and the ability to manage them in a way with integrated knowledge, that becomes a powerful automation opportunity. How could you guys, can you just share your vision on that? Because I'm sure, I know uh, you guys are probably talking about that. You guys are certainly on stage saying, hey, if you got connectors, just build an agent for that. That's right, that's right. Well, I mean, I think two points, right? To your earlier comment, Stripe views itself as this financial source of truth. Right, because of all the different products and uh, customer information that's there. And so the question is really how to unlock that. Now, when you layer on AI on top of that, there's a lot of power in terms of agents being able to go in there and analyze the data to have better outcomes. So I think about some of our fraud detection products that are out there and how agents are able to then leverage and understand different types of uh, situations and scenarios to highlight potential fraud detection issues. Right, This is our Sigma product. And we were just talking together about what that might look like to expose those agents yes. and surface them inside of a workflow automation tool, how powerful that could look like. So yeah. definitely the talk is there. All right, yeah, guys, I, know, if about the, okay. if I, I just want one comment on that. What's interesting to me is when we even started the partnership and we were, first of all, I mean, a connector may be old, but it's, it is table stakes. Like yeah. one of the big things we're doing is we're, we're putting out the branded connector for Stripe in our connector library because it's just a building block. But Right away, we were looking at you know what are the what are the use cases high value and we, and we even had I know internally and, and and maybe in some of our partner discussions we were thinking beyond the connector like there's a bunch of stuff that business functionality the common tasks that you're going to want to do in conjunction with the connector which is why we were also launching not just these the not just the connector but the these recipes and templates for integration and we were thinking breaking those apart into you know. Because they're specific to Stripe, it's kind of a one, it's like a one-sided recipe, and it really becomes the genesis for it, a potential agent down the road. Because yeah. as Batty said, like, you know, these functions that, that Stripe is already packaging, already packaged through the API, you know, when you plug it into a framework where you've got the data and you've got the application. Okay, you mentioned recipes, I want powerful. to get to that because I want to get into specifics. But before we get into the, the partnership um, uh, relationship you guys have, how long have you guys been partnering? Um, when did it start? And obviously some fruits coming off that tree now, you got marketplace activity sure. on Stripe. T t explain the, well, I got the partnership. August 4th. <laughs> <laughs> what, 2010? It's, it's, no, it's, it's, been, it's been quite a recent, I mean we. This so, year? This yeah, year. yeah. yeah. So well, you guys sorry, 2023, so it, okay. we're, not, we're not in the future yet, but yeah, no, the, it's, it's with less than a year, yeah. less than a year that we've had this collaboration. I mean, within our, we have a 
a number like over 100 like, like over 100 cust common customers and we've got we have integration cases where you know we've integrated stripe we had some recipes we also have uh i'm sure you know cases where stripe customers are using them but this collaboration in earnest is, is only less than a year old and we're already we're already this far down the path, so we're very excited. That's actually one of the benefits we've been hearing from you guys and your customers here is that the agility on with Boomi being cloud-based yeah. gives you agility on product development or yeah. solution development, whatever well, you call it. Our, our agility and also the robustness of Stripe's maturity in the API yeah. space is yeah. a huge is a huge one. This is not, you know, chiseling through the concrete to find what, the data. What, 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 what about very, Stripe was good that you guys loved about? What was good? I see, I see your point. Yeah. They could get with multiple systems with Boomi. They got access to more aperture for Stripe yep. on the integration. What's the benefit yeah. of uh, Stripe like for just, Boomi? Just, a, as I said, world-class API uh, capability. Um, the, just the robustness of the, of the functionality in there, not only in what is apparent when you go through the Stripe documentation, work with it, but just the the experience of supporting developers, like, I mean, catering to the developer experience is something that Stripe is in the top, you know, 99th percentile of doing. So but they solve their smooth. own problem internally, which is yeah. take the developer integration, make it easy, check, bin yeah. that from day one, That's right. and then turn it to a global payment processing platform at scale. That's right. I mean, that is ultimately where you guys are at right now. That's right. And I think it enables Boomi now to offer finance automation as part of their suite. That's a huge bit huge when you deal. think about yeah. cross, uh, you know, global types of integration opportunities there. So you class you classify that as a strong partnership opportunity from Stripe. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, you get access to uh, more integration systems and you guys get the leader in cloud-based yeah. APIs, Finance. large scale money. Well, right and I, and I, and I yeah. did mention world class integration knowledge within the team, right? I mean, Fatty and, and his team have a, have a great background there. They're, they're, I mean, their business is, is, yeah. is integration within Stripe. So it's, well, it's, cla it's a classic decoupling or unbundling the enterprise, <laughs> if you will. Because if you think about what you have to solve for, you optimize around global footprint, you have all kinds of things you got to worry about. That's right. And that are really unique to Stripe. You get that benefit. So that's decoupled from you. You just call on them. They yeah. call on you, and it is a new space good for us. And I, I think that uh, you know one of the big things coming out of the announcements that we made yesterday, and we'll expand upon this afternoon in the product keynote, uh, is just this. This like we're more we're going to be more and more collaborative in the digital economy. That's one thing that you know the the specialization of of capabilities that companies like Stripe can do in, in the in their business domains and the ability to then connect everything. Like, yeah. And the fact that you know, not every company is going to want to go and build it themselves. It just makes sense to do best of breed. We have the capability to do that. So more and more collaboration is going to be the name of the game. And with the, with the generative AI thing coming out, which gets everyone more hype around the um, generative side of the business, which is really just a great new category of, of runtime uh, new things. So you got to be real time. That's right. Check, you guys done that. Yeah. You got to integrate multiple systems. This trusted data management layer is a huge deal and it's a hard nut to crack in the enterprise. If you're trying to be a, a, a horizontally scalable data layer that's trusted, that's real time and doing critical mission critical applications. I mean, show me someone doing that. That's very hard to do. No, I mean, it's extremely difficult. And that's why we started with these enterprise grade systems to build out those recipes. This idea around NetSuite and Stripe in terms of invoice synchronization or link uh, payments is a huge win for the joint customers that we give have. Give me an example there. of some of these recipes. Let's go and, and give me an uh, give and tell me what would have to happen if those recipes weren't in place. If I didn't have a recipe, what was, what was my work look like? Take us through some of the recipes. So let's just think about uh, NetSuite as your ERP, yeah. right? In terms of thinking about invoice generation, sending out invoices to, to customers to go off and pay those things, this is now automatable through a Boomi workflow. Then you can also generate a payment link that allows customers to dynamically select from over 45 different payment options. It securely stores their payment information so that the next time that they use Link, it's all filled in for them. So it's a win for from an onboarding and usage standpoint, but it's a massive win for the customers on the end of the spectrum that are actually interacting with these systems or paying their invoices. And their alternative for not having a recipe is what? I think at that point, custom you, code. Custom code. You go <laughs> in and you use the Stripe APIs and you try to yeah. work your way through NetSuite or to, through Salesforce and build out yeah. these types of integrations. And the developer quits. Hey, who wrote this code? I mean, this is <laughs> the what developer we're has about. to become the business domain expert. And that's never, never what you want. But yeah, explain. This is a huge value. I mean, think about just the alternative not having this. Yeah, I mean, I, I think with Boomi's 
our whole ethos has always been to um, lower the barrier of entry for all different types of personas, right? So, I mean, we we have a lot of te- technical yeah. users, but we have a we we with a low code approach, it just opens yeah. it opens the possibility for more people to be involved and and actually. Um, business domain experts, yeah, right. You, you can't have your developer be a domain expert on everything. So, yeah. Well, Mad Buddy, congratulations on a great partnership, and we'll want to hear more. Um, final question: Next year, when we're here, um, what do you guys hope to accomplish in the partnership? Is there anything on the roadmap you guys want to check off? Obviously, moving pretty fast now. Less than a year, you got recipes in the Stripe marketplace, so your customers are benefiting. Right. You're getting access to now a modern enterprise platform. I, we, we, I wouldn't even call it an iPass anymore because what does that what does that even mean? Integrating platforms of service. It's essentially a platform for essentially the yes, future. The, pl- inter- the platform. Yeah, yeah. it's a. I, I, hey. I would love it if we're sitting here talking about the, some Stripe agents and, uh, that are that are capable of doing some of these functions that we, that Batty was talking about and and you know fraud detection and tax and all these things. But you know, undoubtedly, we're going to be building out. We have more and more. We have a whole roadmap of, of recipes and functionality we can build today. That's what I was going to say as well. I mean, I think proliferating those recipes and exposing more and more of the Stripe endpoints and products that are there. That's going to be incredibly exciting for the customers that use it. Well, we'll document. I got one final, final question. Oh. You just made me think of another one. <laughs> From an end user or ecosystem perspective, you guys are creating opportunities for other people to join in and build products on top of you guys. Exactly. I mean, so this whole another cloud layer. So if, if there's you know um, creative developers out there that might want to pick a little niche and make something really powerful, what areas would you see um, developers or someone creative, entrepreneurial, whether it's inside a company or maybe externally, how would they leverage the partnership of Stripe and Boomi? What can I build? Well, what our, should I build? Our, our, What's the demand? Startup, our startup idea, you're killing our startup idea. <laughs> <laughs> there's, there's a, I, hey, I, I, I think maybe maybe the eco, data economics uh, application is something we could do. I, I don't know. Evaluation calculator? Yeah, I, mean, I think I think what, what our role is maybe less about predicting and more about you know creating the options that, yeah. that allow the, 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 the smart people out yeah. there who come up with those ideas that we would never think of. But I think the more the more optionality that we have, the more that we're we're, we're just building the rails. I think it, someone else will build the train. Yeah. Agreed with that. I mean, I think that there's huge opportunity in the ERP, in the tax area, in the CRM area. There's just so much that they can build out there. Um, Our job is just to really expose those endpoints and make sure that the capabilities are there and then turn it over to the community. You know, one thing I noticed just as just an observer of of the Boomi and just the kind of the dynamic of relationships like you guys is that in, in this world where there's manual process, that's an easy area to go to right away. Absolutely. Tax and like all this grunt work, like grind. You know, that is an opportunity. So again, great time. Chenzelin, thanks for coming on theCUBE. Thank Appreciate you so it. much. Great to see you again. But thanks for coming on Cube. You're now a CUBE alumni. Love it. All right. <laughs> so much. Awesome. Thanks for coming on. All right, we'll be right back with more. I'm John Furrier, host of theCUBE. Boomi World Day 3, we'll be right back after this short break. <laughs>